if there was only a better way than to use one of these to open your garage door. Fortunately, the Tesla does have a better way. There are actually four ways that you can open your garage door from a Tesla. I'm going to show you how to install a home link. But one way, of course, is this. The second way is to use my Q. The third way is if you have a Miro's garage door opener, you can use your Apple phone or Apple watch. Hey Siri, close North garage door. Closing the North garage door. So that's the uh, third way. And the um, you know, fourth way is using Homelink. Hi, I'm Frank. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a Homelink module in your Tesla Model 3 or Model Y. I have a Model Y that I'm going to be installing it in. Now, you can use the MyQ app if you have a MyQ enabled garage door opener but that also requires a subscription that's going to cost you about $50 a year. If you don't have a MyQ enabled garage door or you don't want to pay the $50 a year, then you can use the Homelink module available from Tesla for about $350. Now, the $350 includes the module and installation of the module. You can get the same modules from Tesla off of eBay for about $200, sometimes a little less. I think I paid $175 to $190, somewhere around there, um, for mine. The installation is extremely easy to do. It requires minimal tools and minimal effort. It's an easy beginning do I hire. Um, so let's see how to do it. Now, obviously, you're going to start by opening the frunk. And this plastic piece here, we're going to take off. Basically, that just snaps off. Just get under here and pull. And just like that, it comes right out. You can see the little white snaps that hold it in. Next, you're going to take this bucket out. It's held in by this clip right here. You can get that out with a um, just a flathead screwdriver. And then four bolts. One, two, three, four. Now, if you look right here, you can see that there's a little indentation there. And that you can get your screwdriver in just to pop it up. and then pull it out. And I'm just gonna keep everything right in there. Along with my... Now, next we're gonna take the uh, other screws uh, out. These are all 10 millimeter. So that's what you're gonna need, a 10 millimeter uh, um, socket and then a uh, driver for it. Now you can use regular um, uh, uh, wrenches if you want. I'm gonna use an electric because it's just quicker. Before you go ahead and lift this bucket out, you need to remove this panel here and remove the um, remove this clip. Uh, otherwise, your panel's not coming out. To get this clip off, this little green tab was inserted all the way, and so I pulled it out. That's a little lock. And so once that's out, you can then remove the uh, clip. Now, once you have that removed, then it's just a simple matter of lifting this bucket up and um, taking it out. Simple as that. 
Now, on the driver's side, give you an overview here. Right here, taped to this wiring harness, this is the connector that you're gonna connect. So I'm gonna get, well, basically I can just grab a hold of it here and do that tape. And now the connector is free. I'm gonna swing it back inside and then out here. And then I grab it from this other side and pull it around out here because we're going to be attaching it right there. There is a cover over top of this connector, so I'm going to remove that, which basically is pull the red locking back and pull this out. I'm going to tape it back where this was um, because this is a leased car, and when I turn it in and get another Tesla, I'm going to remove my module, since it didn't come with it to begin with, and put it in the new car. So I want to make sure that I keep that little cap so that uh, um, it can be put back properly. And this is the uh, Homelink module. All right, let's come around here and you can see the mounting plate. There's the screw hole and there's another hole. Now, if you look at the mounting plate itself, there's the screw hole, and then this little tab there is designed to fit through that hole. Now I've seen some people mount it like that, which is an easy way of doing it, but it's not the correct way. The correct way is to mount it from behind, and that takes a little bit more finesse to get in here with your screw, but that's the correct way of doing it. Now, mine, came with a screw. Some of them don't, but this is a um, M6 by 22 millimeter uh, screw. So that's what you want to get if yours doesn't come with it. Now do yourself a favor and get yourself a microfiber towel and put in here because what you don't want to have happen is you don't want to drop your screw down in there. That would make for a unpleasant day for you, trying to get it out. The screw is magnetic, so that's not too bad, but um, still, if you don't have to fish for something, don't fish for it. So I got my microfiber towel packed underneath there, and now I'm going to um, get this screw then from the backside. Now, because this, the, uh, the mounting bracket is plastic. There's a limit to how much you can end up torquing the screw down. Uh, so I'm gonna use some thread locker blue around the uh, threads. Now once it's started, I'm just gonna get my socket. There is plenty of room to get back in there to uh, tighten it. But you can see the screw is sort of starting to come through there a little bit. Once that's in, you can go ahead and snap your module back into the holder and you're ready to put everything else back together here. Now, before I do that, I'm going to go inside the car and make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. All right, I'm going to hit that. I'm going to come to software. I'm gonna hit and hold the model Y and then when I release it, it's going to say enter access code. Access code is service, S-E-R-V-I-C-E. -E. Okay, improper use of service, enter. Now we're in the uh, service mode. Once I'm in here, I'm gonna come over to this side and I'm going to press 
low voltage, home link. Home link retrofit, screen will boot up. So run, hold the right turn signal in the active position and press down on the brake. Okay. Now it is unlocked. Now it's going to restart. All right, now we're back. And let's run the self test. Self test passed. When you finish getting it set up in service mode, if you immediately go to the home screen, you'll find that the home link is not there. So what you need to do is exit the car, make sure that the screen turns off, and if there's any fans that you can hear, make sure those fans stop. So this lets the uh, screen, when it reboots, get uh, all the information and your home link will appear once you get back in the car. So at this point in time, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and put the rest of your car back together again, since you know that you have successfully installed the home link and your uh, car has recognized it. Installation is just the opposite. Just put your bucket in. Be sure to um, connect this. This is your emergency uh, trunk release in case somebody happens to be small enough to get in there and can't get out when it's closed. Um, again, the four bolts and the clip here push it in then the top part is going to go on and uh, make sure everything is snapped down and you'll be done all right and finally make sure your trim piece is back on look for any openings along here that may tell you to go ahead and press down you know, just give it a little bang to make sure that it's all snapped in place and back in here feel for any looseness uh, which would indicate that one of the clips is not fully seated, uh, and uh, then that'll be back together again. Once you get back in your car, go ahead here, here, and you'll see Create Home Link. Click that. Add a home link name if you want, which I will put as Garage door, or just garage. You have standard mode and D mode. Now standard mode is what you're gonna use if you have a normal garage door opener. D mode is for like gates without remote controls. So set mode. Now have your garage door ready to use. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna stand in front of the car Point your remote control at the bumper, press and hold the button until headlights flash. So let's get around here. And there we go. Headlights flashed. Now let's come back in the car. And it says recording complete. Move to next step. So now we have to program it to the garage door. So let's save this. And now I'm gonna to go to my garage and press uh, learn. I'm up here with my garage door opener. And there is my learn button. So I'm gonna press that. Now press garage door opener button in the car. So I have everything finally set up. I can hit activate and it will open my garage door. I'll show you a couple of other features. One of the things that I really like about the uh, home link, if I press this 
where it says North Garage. You can see I have North and South. Uh, I have two garage doors. Um, I could have easily named them Double Garage Door and um, Single Garage Door, but I named them North and South because that's just the orientation of them. If you hit Settings, now from here, you can add a new garage door. Uh, I forget how many, uh, here you go, up to three devices can be programmed for your Model Y. So I have two devices, I could add another one. If I go here to North Garage Door, you can see some of the settings. Um, it'll auto fold the mirrors. I have mine set to auto opening when arriving. When I get about 70 feet from my garage door, it'll automatically send the signal and open the door. You can also set auto close when leaving, which I don't do. But if you're using this, be sure to click this reset location. Pull up to the front of your garage door and click reset location. Uh, that way it'll know exactly your, your geo position and will now go ahead and when you're 70 feet from it automatically open things. I have it to chime when it's opening and closing. Uh, that's an option that you have as well. If you get rid of your car and leave your home link in, you can click clear home link memory and that'll clear everything from here. So that's some of the uh, additional features that you have. I hope this has been uh, helpful. If it has been, uh, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps me out. Now, there's something I have to tell y'all particularly if you have a Chamberlain garage door opener. I tell you, this drove me nuts for a long time. I had purchased a $19 garage door opener from Amazon, and it works fine to open and close the garage doors. It programs the door fine. When I used this to try to program the Tesla, I could not get anything to work. I would get the lights to flash on the garage door opener, but it would not open and close. Finally, I ended up getting the LiftMaster garage door opener that came with my garage doors, and I used that to program, and everything works fine. So if you run into trouble, be sure to use the LiftMaster uh, garage door opener not an Amazon knockoff. So now I'm happy, everything's in good shape. So hopefully if some of you are running into this same type of issue, then you'll know the answer. The uh, garage door opener works great. Saved myself 150 bucks and uh, hope you guys enjoy your Tesla as much as I enjoy mine. Bye-bye.